I, I think I'll go back three years ago. Uh, this is uh, just about when we were getting the undersea cable. If you recall, we had embarked on uh, infrastructure in this country and we had very simple, very, very simple policy objectives that we make the ICT infrastructure in this country, we promote content and applications. Um, so we had just dealt with infrastructure. We were looking towards content and um, more applic and applications. That's how Open Data began uh, when we said that there is so much data in government which could actually be used uh, by application developers to do something. That was the first time. Indeed, we actually did open data.geo.ke and put an empty, empty uh, website which had practically nothing and started talking to ministries to give us data to put in the Kenya open data. It did not succeed very well. But sometime last year, I was addressing uh, the youth at uh, IHUB and actually they challenged me that now we have reached a point where we absolutely need uh, data in formats that we can be able to do something. And I committed that give me two months, I will come back and uh, let you know whether we can have this data. Indeed, I went straight to the Ministry of Planning and started explaining to them that much of the data we have could actually be of value to a number of youth in this country who are developing applications. Uh, it took a while before the ministry accepted and actually they went ahead and gave me some old data uh, which they had put in one of their websites. But towards the end, I thought this was very important. We should inform our president. And uh, when we informed him, he said there is no problem um, if it is not sensitive th data for this country and if these kids need it to make uh, a living out of it, uh, we can go ahead and do it. And they did indeed they committed to launch uh, this open data. And with the commitment from the president, I went around uh, seeking to get more data from various ministries. Uh, there was a lot of resistance initially. But towards the end, uh, I was lucky because I could go straight to some of my colleagues and uh, say, please give me this data and I'm going to use it um, uh, in this way with some youth who want to develop applications. I had to explain what applications are, who would use it. Um, and I was lucky that actually they agreed to give me this data. And as you recall, uh, August last year, the president eventually launched with some 250 databases uh, having been released from various ministries, then various research centers, then NGOs. Uh, now we are having people who are coming forward and saying, we want to give data towards this initiative. That is how, in summary, we started the open data in Kenya. Open data does not mean all data. And uh, in most cases, government is very suspicious uh, when you talk about data. And of course, uh, there is that element where uh, when you hide information, it becomes power. Uh, and so uh, it was difficult for me to explain that not all open data is actually uh, not every data that they have that will become open data. Of course, I was sensitive to a lot more data that government has that uh, may not necessarily be used out there. So it took longer to separate that which has already been used that can be added value. Say, for example, the census data. Of course, they were worried, uh, can you remove the names? And we said, OK, we will do that. Uh, but we needed that census data uh, so that we could get something out of it because they had practically finished why they needed the census data.
I've been arguing that in data would actually improve our productivity and eventual economic growth. So I need the data for development. Uh, that, is, that has been my argument all through. And uh, if you see the kind of applications that we are urging the youth to come up with, there are those that are, ge that are geared towards improving the livelihood of Kenyans. Uh, so we are looking at the data more as a development tool rather than a transparency tool. Of course we know that's a secondary benefit, uh, but we need not emphasize it because it would send wrong signals and uh, create more resistance in the release of the data. We had a number of people, we had support from the World Bank. We, I was too rough with so many people to make sure that we deliver. Uh, and most things that work, they work within a very short period of time, intense focus and making sure that everything works. Uh, if we delayed, uh, say, six, seven months, I am sure up to date we could not have that data. But we needed to have some data, show the people that we can use this data to come up with a product. And this product is going to create employment for our youth. So I was more concerned with uh, creating value out of the data and showing Kenyans that indeed we need more data to create more value and more, uh, more efficiency in our economy. The objective was not uh, empowering uh, locals to develop visualization software, for example. Uh, and that is why we quickly went with what was available in terms of visualization. Uh, and what happened is we quickly looked at visualization software that was available at the time and picked one because it provided us with the solutions that we needed. Now that we have the data out there, the challenge is that let them come up with a, a visualization software and say we want to use ours. Nobody has stopped the local people from developing their local visualization software. Indeed, I'm actually going out to universities to talk to professors so that they can be part of the process in terms of analyzing the data. Because data alone, without analytics, it is actually useless. So uh, my going out to talk to professors, if they can follow and say, let us see how the professors do the analytics, then provide that solution in terms of visualization, I will be very happy to say, let us shift the data from where we have and use the local solutions. But the point is that we first had to release that data, put it in formats that people can understand, and what was available? There was no local developer who had developed a local solution for visualization. Uh, you can say that uh, you ignored AB, AB uh, Mr. So-and-so, uh, or this product was available here, but you went for a foreign product. Uh, you must begin somewhere. We have actually seen, the, the problem is that uh, we don't make noise about it. Um, I've been to two or three launches of those who are utilizing the data. But it, truly, I can tell you that after the release of the data, uh, you feel empty uh, because uh, nothing comes after that. The data is there and uh, you don't know who is interrogating it. Uh, this is exactly how it's supposed to be, that put it out there. You may not know who is using it, but one day you would see something that comes out of it. But I've been lucky to see something that has come out of what we have put out there. The reason why you're putting it out there is that you have multiple people who are viewing it with different ideas, who come out with different uh, products. Uh, and of course, it was not going to take off uh, day two when you release the data. Uh, people had to read it, understand it, synthesize it, look at the solution they are looking at. I think by now that has been done. What you are going to see are the people trying to solve some of the problems we have, especially with the county data. It's been very difficult to understand the per capita income 
from a specific county because we normally get the average per capita income for the whole country, which is very deceptive because 60% of the uh, GDP comes from Nairobi. So if you remove Nairobi, uh, you find the counties are way below the per capita income we assume to be the Kenyan per capita income. This is going to be challenges from the local leaders uh, because they will be saying we are behind. Uh, what we need to create out of the data that is out there is to begin to create competition so that people can compete and say, well, we are way below here. We want to move five steps. We want to be at the top. Um, and this would actually uh, stimulate economic growth much faster than you can do it when you have an aggregate number which really does not tell you the local story. This is what you are going to see. So the benefits of, of having uh, special county data uh, are going to be magnified when we begin to have local leadership uh, which would begin to we would, which we would begin to see from next year. The open data is actually part and parcel of Vision 2030. Uh, what does Vision 2030 seek to achieve? It's going, it seeks to achieve the middle income status of our economy. Uh, you cannot achieve that middle income status with several inefficiencies in the economy. And once you have the data and you use the data to make decisions, and you use the data to know where you are inefficient. You begin to remove those inefficiencies, you become more efficient, meaning you are more productive. You are using less cost to produce more. What is lacking in developing countries is actually productivity. Farmers don't know what crop they need to grow where to get the, be the, the best uh, yield. This is the data you are getting from the, from the open data, where a farmer, even an illiterate farmer, would send an SMS and say, please let me know what I can do with this place. And then because you have the GPS uh, technology, the expert would know, they will tell you, instead of growing maize in this place, grow cassava, because you would get better yield and you'll be more productive in your production. Uh, this would help the economy in terms of improving efficiencies within the agricultural sector. And this is how you would begin to make more money from practically things that we never used to make money from. If you look at the farmers who do tomatoes in this country, uh, they sell them fresh, and when they, uh, they, they are more ripe, they throw them away because there is no market for other things. Now there is an opportunity that you can actually show them how to dry them and extend the life of those tomatoes. So instead of throwing them into Nairobi River, uh, they are sold as dried tomatoes because dried tomatoes is not only a delicacy in this country, but we spend billions of shillings importing those dried tomatoes from Spain. Uh, so if you are able to, to help in terms of forex expenditure, you actually help stabilize the local currency. So for Vision 2030 to be achieved, you need improved productivity, more efficiency in the economy, and a greater, uh, faster growth of the GDP. Uh, because the definition of the middle income economy is measured by how much per capita income is for the country, and that's what we need to achieve. We haven't achieved the benefits of open data in this country because we need to involve the journalists, we need to involve uh, the professors, we need actually to create what you call the, the, the triple helix, where you have the universities, the government, and the private sector. We must begin to move where our culture has put us to the modern world. There are beautiful recipes that we have here in Africa, but we are not able to market those recipes because we did not have a structured way or a method to use a scientific method. Today, if somebody asks you, 
uh, how do you cook ugali? They say put water, when it boils, you put, you put flour. But they don't tell you how many liters of water would swallow how many kilos of flour. So they tell you, you keep on pouring, and it becomes so hard, you throw it away. So it, you take so long to learn how to cook food, when practically you can have the recipe that one liter of water, you would use a half kilo of flour, and you don't have to put salt. Even salt in this country, yeah? When people ask, how much salt do you put in the food? You know, you just put, you know, you just pick and you just put it in. Then you get too much salt. You don't get the precise uh, salt to make, to get the taste of the product. So we actually must move our culture towards scientific methods of decision making. That way you can have um, a longer life or, or you can create posterity in our culture because there are things we have lost because we did not have ways of keeping them so that our children, our grandchildren would be able to understand. So open data would help us in many ways uh, to move us closer to decision making using uh, scientific methods and using those scientific methods to create some of the things that we do ordinarily in our lives. By driving it, it means that local people would use it because the data is local, because the information that comes from there is local. If you create value out of it where people can see the connection between that data and, uh, and their livelihood, people would go for it. For example, we have uh, the census data. Of course, when you ask people, Did you, do you know anything about census? Yes, they will tell you, oh, we have this number of ethnic group and that. That's it. But when you dig deeper into it and you find, uh, I was telling people, for example, that uh, some districts, for every one girl who goes to university, 10 boys go you would see suddenly, is it true? Where can I find that? You know, even journalists, they want to write that. But that information in the format that it was is not in a, a format that can help the journalists to give the right information. So when you synthesize the data, when you analyze it and come into one-liners that make an impact on the lives, people would go back and see, let me see more of this. What would my district be? Or what is the percentage in my district? What is the percentage from the village I come from? Uh, this is what creates interest because it has uh, value to the people, to the local people. Without that value, nobody will look at it. Without the information that people want to hear, uh, nobody will look at it. That is why I'm saying that I must work with the university's statisticians to simplify this and to create one-liners uh, that have a meaning to the population. And the people will now say, here is the data. Can I know what it is saying about my people? The leaders will begin to ask that. How does our data compare with another district or with another county? Uh, then you begin uh, the local aspects of data because local content is more powerful than anything because it has it touches the people's hearts and the people want uh, to know more because when you look smarter than anybody everybody wants to know where you get your smartness uh, that is the thinking behind localizing the data and making people to understand the local data OGP is a I take it as a peer review um, partnership where you go and share what you've been doing with the data. You get ideas, you localize those ideas. And of, of course it gives you um, sort of a wake up, a wake up call that you need to do something. So if we have an annual reporting mechanism, you would find that our eyes would continuously be on the ball 
uh, trying to see what can I do with this, what am I going to report there, what innovations that I've come up with from this. Uh, this is what such partnerships uh, bring, where you go out there and share and be able to live up to those standards, uh, it would actually improve uh, your status uh, in the form, your status uh, within the organization. This is the reason why we, we have been, we make sure that uh, the Ministry of Planning is with us. Uh, we've been making sure the Ministry of Finance is with us. Uh, this is a government. The, our ministry is simply driving it. I have never tried to monopolize uh, or to, to, to say I solely created this because if they refused with the data, I would, not be, I would not be talking about this. So practically this is a government initiative. Uh, we are simply driving it for the government. When government uh, joins an international organization uh, and uh, certain obligations are expected, uh, then you've got to go through the cabinet to approve this. So after we did the launch, uh, we are now working on the cabinet approval to completely institutionalize open uh, data in this country, at the same time be able to join other countries uh, at the open government partnerships. So we are doing this. At the same time, we are also trying to work on the action plan as required by the OGB. And as we are working on this, it actually opens up other departments in government to join in and share the process of become, making Kenya a member of the Open Government Partnership. They are very cautious. They want to see what happens. Where will the mistake come from? Uh, that's why I'm saying they are very cautious. But I'm 100% sure they will be very happy because uh, this data is available out there. Uh, it's not that uh, this is the first thing, first time that Kenya has had its data scrutinized out there. Even the Ministry of Finance now says this is the best way to, to, to monitor spending at county level. Um, it is a tool that is going to help them to see how the resources are spent at the county level. This was not there before. We need to improve this, also lobbying the Ministry of, Ag of, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, uh, because once they begin to see the benefits, for example, the Ministry of Health, if you monitor daily a clinic, how many patients went through, what kind of diseases they reported. If you are told 100 people reported 70 where uh, they had diarrhea, you actually know there is an epidemic. You don't need to be told you can just send a team there to look at the epidemic and sort it out. The Minister of Education, which is involved now in a crisis, the new policies are affecting everybody. But when you ask people, what was the thinking behind these policies? Uh, did you do a survey? Did you do this? Nobody tells you anything. Uh, if we begin to show the numbers that actually if you had done a survey, this policy would have been looked at differently. So people would begin to see that numbers can actually help you to make a policy, yeah? To make a policy that is based on a better scientific method. Right now we make policies sometimes which are not packed by any uh, thought process. And that's why we're saying that once we begin to make sense out of it. You would see practically every ministry saying, have you checked open data? What is, what is the average number of students who pass from these districts? How many of them were taken to national schools? Uh, what is the percentage of public students who passed? How many who passed from private uh, primary schools? Uh, these are the questions. We should not be making noise in the darkness, you see? Right now, you don't know 
how many students who pass from academies you are being told by the ministry that we are not taking them. You don't know how many who passed from public schools. Uh, this data must be available to Kenyans, then let them decide by themselves. Or let them argue and say, if you actually need to take more public students into public schools, then uh, your numbers you are telling us are wrong, are wrong. That is what you call transparency. Right now, everybody is arguing uh, in the dark. Nobody actually knows what is happening. Uh, even the most learned people in the Ministry of Education, they keep on hearing uh, parents are making noise, uh, the minister has said this, the permanent secretary has said this. Put it out there. Let the people see and tell you that there is a mistake here. We are burying problems. We are burying problems. When you take students who have not uh, been prepared well in, uh, in the primary school, to a, a national school, it means the burden of converting that child to become as competitive as the one who prepared well is with the secondary school. Then you look in the Western world. Uh, this would have been done in Cambridge or Oxford or Harvard. They haven't done it. There is nothing wrong having bright kids going to a certain school because you then actually have brighter people in the nation. But now we are making arguments which have no basis at all. These initiatives, by the way, it happens to be the time that I'll be fired from my post, uh, <laughs> that I would hope that every Kenyan will be singing about open data. And uh, my exit would not mean nothing or would not impact on the initiative and it can be driven by anybody. Because when you have a majority of people using the data, they would actually demand it. That is what I want to achieve. That demand is coming from the public, not just in them who is begging for data to put in the open data.